Managers of Reddit, what's the fastest you've had to fire a new hire? About an hour. Kid was a temp hire and we set him up at his job. Showed him what to do, turned him loose. There was a can of degreaser sitting with the machine he was operating. I came into my office, sat down, looked up, and watched him pick up a shop rag, spray a lot of degreaser on it, then he pressed it into his face and started huffing it. I got up, went over to him and said, Come on, son, and walked him out to the door. I asked the temp agency to please attempt to weed out a little better. Story 2. I managed a gas station for a while. I hired this guy who seemed completely normal, which was hard to come by, so I had him start the next day. After about 30 minutes of working, he said he needs a break. No big deal, something must have come up. Maybe 10 minutes later, a customer came in saying he was passed out in the men's restroom. I sent another guy working into the restroom. The dude I just hired was naked and completely unresponsive. Paramedics come in and it turns out he overdosed on H. He survived, but I still never got an answer on why he was naked. Story 3. I work at a daycare. I'm not a supervisor, but I watched my supervisor fire someone on the first day. Most of our new hires are actually middle-aged women. 90% of them are awesome, but a lot of them feel super entitled because they're middle-aged. Doesn't help that I'm only 23 either. Anyway, our new hire's first day of work. She seems okay. Doesn't make too much of an effort with the kids. Not that abnormal. Takes some time to get comfortable with other people's kids, after all. We change diapers on a schedule unless they poop or obviously need a change. I've changed a couple diapers already and notice she doesn't lift a finger if the kid needs a change. 10 a.m rolls around, which is when we change every kid. I ask her to help me and she seems surprised and goes, Oh, I don't change diapers, honey. Yep. This lady refused to change diapers. She took a job caring for babies. She was fired maybe an hour later. How does that not come up in the interview at all? I guess it's kind of just assumed that you know what you're signing up for. She clearly did not. Story 4. She didn't even make it through the office tour. We hire a lot of seasonal workers, and last year we had a girl with one of the legit small particles of peanut dust will absolutely murder her peanut allergies. So we put up a few reminder signs, had some peanut-free dishes and forks in the kitchen, and that kind of stuff. New girl started a few weeks after most of the group, and when I was showing her around, she pointed to the signs and asked sarcastically if we were serious. She looked genuinely surprised when I said they were real serious, and then she smirked and said, You actually believe someone can die from peanuts? And followed it up with, Stuff like that isn't real, you'll see. I asked a few questions to make sure she wasn't trying to make a terrible joke, and then went full manager speak and asked if she'd be able to follow the kitchen rules and keep her coworkers safe. And when it was obvious she was serious, I told her she was done for the day and could head home. I don't have hiring or firing powers, so I was a little worried when I took it to our boss. If she denied it, it would be her word against mine. Fortunately, when my boss took her aside to ask what happened, she replied, OP was getting all weird about someone who's pretending to have one of those fake peanut allergies. From what I hear, she was completely, genuinely shocked when she was fired. Hey OP, would you describe the shock as anaphylactic? Hey. Eh. Story 5. One week. I got a call from the county jail because this girl I had just hired had been arrested and she refused to give any info to the police except for the fact that she worked for this particular store. They called me trying to figure out her info and a person to contact about her arrest. I told them I couldn't give out that info, but I would call her emergency contact to let them know that she was in jail. I called this girl's emergency contact, who was her mom, and told the mom that her daughter was currently sitting in jail. All the mom said was, Figures and she hung up on me. After she was released from jail about two days later, she ended up in the hospital from alcohol poisoning. So, yeah, I had to let her go. The worst part is, I actually liked her. Story 6. Hired a kid to work opening shifts at a local pool. We were short-staffed, so he was learning the ropes with me on a 5am shift. As we opened, he asked if he could make a quick cup of coffee. I agreed, asking him to make me one as well. Around five minutes later, a swimmer comes up to me and says she saw my lifeguard snorting something. I was obviously upset and went to go see what was going down. I go up to the window and saw him doing another line. After a short argument, he finally decided to just leave and not make me drug test him. Lasted a whole ten minutes of us being open. It's close to coffee. The effect is somewhat similar. Whether you should be doing it at work and let alone in the open, eh, probably not. Story 7. I let some poor kid go after 30 minutes. He didn't want to quit because it was his first job, and he bought the scrubs entirely for this occasion. But he was clearly in over his head the second he started his orientation. To my own credit, he interviewed like a champ. Some people are just really good at saying all the right things. I asked him if he would feel better if he were fired. My intention being to remind him that fired is a bad thing, so if he thinks he can't hang, he should quit on his own. He said, yes. So I fired him. He shook my hand and told me I had nice eyebrows and left. 
The next day he emailed me to let me know he was quitting? I told him no hard feelings since he was already fired. I've now learned to ask every phlebotomist applicant if they are comfortable being exposed to blood. Frickin' thanks, Connor. Story 8. My job recently hired a woman to work at a restaurant and she got fired within two days due to harassment. We believe she was a hanging addict and have now changed our interviewing procedures. She would go up to the desk and smack the receptionist's butt. The receptionist grabbed her hand and cussed her out the third time she tried doing it. She was being trained by our male manager and she placed his hand on top of her crotch and kept telling him, My mother lives down the street, we can just go hang out there, babe. Yes, she called him babe. She was pushing her breasts into him and intentionally bumping into him. She also hit on the customers. In whatever capacity, this person clearly has a problem they need sorted out. And I hope they do sort it out. Because this sounds genuinely disruptive to not only your own life, but everyone around you. Story 9. Five days. We hired the server who had been waiting tables her whole life and was a GM of a restaurant for about 10 years at one point. She was the typical alcoholic white trash woman with stringy hair and baggy sweaters that smelled like stale smoke. Anyway, she somehow makes it through training, barely, and shows up for her first shift, late and hammered. She walks to the back booth and proceeds to pass the F out. A different manager tried stirring her awake, then poking her and shaking her a little. Nothing worked. Finally, he just roared her name and she woke up and he told her to leave and they would mail her a check. And as she's tottering away, she yells obscenities and flips everyone off. Story 10. Two different ones. I run a car dealership. I hired a young guy, 22 maybe. He's waiting around after getting hired to get his passwords and is out with other salesmen. A man walks in with his teen daughter and the guy starts loudly talking about the things he would do with her. The dad hears and is brought to me. I walked out and fired him on the spot. That one was 20 minutes after being hired. The second, I hired a guy to be a salesman and asked him if he has a record. He said no and was fired four hours later for having a grand theft auto charge on his record. For the second guy, at least you can't say he wasn't passionate about cars. Story 11. A temp we hired for a project interviewed well. Well dressed, a bit on the svelte side, spoke perfect English with the barest hint of a London accent, looked you in the eye, had ton of credentials. If anything, he seemed overqualified for what was essentially a grunt lab position. Did well with a bunch of managers. First day of work, he went to orientation. I got a call from someone who worked in that building and said my new temp was a real piece of work. Sat in the conference room, slipped his shoes off, and propped his cracked feet on the chair in front of him. He also brought a huge, sloppy, highly spiced pastrami grinder, left a mess behind. He also slapped the butt of someone over there. She reported it, but I didn't hear about that officially from HR until day three. Day two, he showed up to the computer lab. He was a completely different person. I mean, a different human. He was squat, overweight, different face and hair, had a thick accent. I didn't know who he was, but he was not the guy we hired. The only similarity was his ethnicity, but he was completely not the same person. This guy was gross and completely inept. We went over his resume and I got a copy of his ID. He wasn't even a US citizen. I'd never come across this before. The temp company pulled a bait and switch. On day three, he was two hours late, but by that point I had the permission to fire him based on his lack of being a US citizen. We later found out this temp agency would send the nice guy for the interview and then send someone of the similar race to the job with the same name, and they had gotten away with it for quite some time. But usually the guy they sent was not this poor of a worker, so sadly it went unnoticed, until now. Story 12. I worked at a boarding kennel for a few years and really loved it. It's hard, loud, dirty work, but I like animals and dogs are the best people. We also boarded exotics, which was neat as hell. Anyway, the boss hires on this new gal that seems a little off. During training, she would stare off into space and not really acknowledge me. But when I walked her through the process of feeding and cleaning kennels, she did it just fine. So I sent her on her way. Her first real day of work, she went out to clean the kennels, scoop poop, and wet bedding and replace it. This is a long process. Takes two hours if you really know the work. Well, six hours in her shift, no one has seen her. So I go hunting and easily half the kennels aren't done and a lot of doors are open. For dog safety, you just don't do that. Now I can't find the girl or four of the dogs. I run to the boss because I genuinely thought the girl had stolen someone's pets. The whole team goes looking for her. We knew the boss found her because she's a screamer. She's got these four big dogs. A Malamute, a Great Dane, and two Shepherds. All on leashes, tied to the fence, and she's giving them baths in the owner's horse trough. We don't groom. She brought the shampoo from home in her lunchbox. She didn't understand why the boss was mad. It's so hot and they look so unhappy. Look at how happy the other 10 I already did are. The boss literally dragged her to her car, kicking and screaming because she yelled, we abuse dogs. So yeah, six hours. Story 13 was absolutely recommended to hire this girl, who a previous manager had experience working with. I had serious doubts. I always, always trust my gut instinct, but as I trusted this manager's opinion of her, I gave her a shot. 
It was like she had never had a job before. Not even she was bad in the field I was in. It was like a young teenager being taught their first job. Consistently late, couldn't take clear directions, absolutely awful work attitude, put all my staff in a poor form because they were constantly picking up her slack, came into work from an all-night bender still hammered and was sent home, and responded with, That's great, I'm heading back to the party. Screw that noise. See ya. Never hired anybody on anyone else's recommendation after that. Story 14. Okay, I have one, but I'm not a manager. I'd worked IT for quite a while. There was a guy I worked with at a job who was troubled, but trying to get it together. He had lost a previous IT job because he was selling surplus gear on eBay. Through an odd set of circumstances, I met this guy in a social setting unrelated to work. My friends that had known him for a while said that the eBay thing is what led him to losing his last job. Anyway, smash cut to four years later. I'm at a completely different job and I see him. He had lost a ton of weight, not that he was fat or anything to begin with. Anyway, I said, hey dude, what's up? He looked super skittish and said he had just gotten hired. I said, cool, hit me up sometime and we'll catch up. I never saw him again. That night, he allegedly entered the building and made off with several servers. He didn't realize we had cameras everywhere and had him dead to rights hauling it off. He was given a choice to return it and leave or they would file charges. He returned it and left. Story 15. I had a guy who said everything I wanted to hear during the interview. I hired him into a lead position and put him on an easy job site the following day. I show up at 10am to see how he was doing and uh, he wasn't. He hadn't done anything of value. He has set up one ladder. I ask him if he was okay and if he needed a hand getting his feet wet. He assured everything would be done on schedule and tells me he has a decent plan of execution. I leave to the next job site for an inspection feeling confident he would kick some butt. After the inspection, I swung back. The guy hadn't done anything else. I find his crew just hanging out and they tell me he went to a dental appointment. I call him, no answer. I set up with the guys and get them going on the job after a half day was completely wasted. And I guess he was wasted too. I get a call from one of my guys on a delivery and he says one of my trucks is in front of the VFW. I drive over to investigate and sure enough, BS McGee is pounding $2 beers and smoking every cigarette in town. I ask the bartender if I can send him a drink. She filled a pint, then I wrote him a check for his time on site and put it in the beverage and she brought it to him. He looked at the pint funny and then the bartender pointed at me and he looked at me with a shocked expression. Expression. I waved and said, your services are no longer needed, and walked out. He ran out and said he was just taking an early lunch. I told him he was free to do so. I took truck keys from him and drove back to the job site. He broke the driver's side headlight by the time I came back for the truck later that afternoon. But apparently he did it in front of a crowd and someone called the cops on him and he ended up getting arrested for resisting. Some people learn the hard way. Story 16. Back when I was a manager of an auto shop, I had to hire a new guy to handle drivability problems. Basically carburetors, engine tunes, and sensor problems back then. It took forever to find someone. But I finally hired a guy who had 20 years experience, an impressive resume, and all the certifications. Suspicious thing was, he showed up for his first day driving an old beater Chevy. Body one color, hood another, fenders another, giant toolbox hanging out the back hatch. Supposedly, he was a top-end, high-earning tech. First week, there were problems with misdiagnosis and comebacks. Monday after, his wife called in sick for him. She showed up to pick up his check. Next week, more problems. Wife called in sick for him Monday again. Our dispatcher was real tough and figured something was up with the guy. Tech goes for smoke break. Dispatcher comes out and checks the big gulp the guy always had at his toolbox. Turns out, it's like straight vodka. Anyway, fired third weekend. Story 17. I wasn't the manager, but I was the unofficial supervisor, since the last supervisor had walked out on the job and they never really replaced him. I was the only one working who had the job for more than three months. I'd been on for five at this point, and seen about a hundred or so new hires who rarely lasted more than a week. I have already relayed the story of the guy at this job who was jerking the gherkin to the contents of the ladies' room sanitary receptacles, but that guy took a while and I didn't fire him. Technically didn't fire this guy either, although management didn't contest my actions and fired him for real the next morning. Essentially caught him stuffing his pants with merchandise. This was a third-party cleaning company. Our job was to go to client location, clean the store, the bathrooms, etc., and leave. We were not employed by the store itself. I walked around the corner and saw him shoving packages of Pokemon cards into his pants, like clearing the shelf. Escorted him to the store overnight manager and they called the cops. Cops searched him, searched his car, searched his lunchbox. He did agree to the search, albeit begrudgingly. And they found about $900 in Pokemon cards, electronic-related merch, and DVDs. I told him he could contact the district manager about his pay. That was his first day on the job. Story 18. Was giving a new hire the tour of the facility, and we stopped in the kitchen. I explained there was to be no eating on the work floor, but the break room and lounge were both available for use during mealtimes. I pointed out the cupboards and fridge where he could store his lunch items, and showed him the coffee pot for common use. 
As I was pointing out where the coffee supplies were, he walked right up to the fridge, opened it, and scanned it. He took out a lunchbox and started going through it. I don't remember exactly what he took out, but it was a piece of fruit, a drink, and a baggie of cookies or crackers or something. We sat down at a table and talked about some other basics, and said we needed to get back on the floor. He returned to the fridge and grabbed something else out, and I reminded him his food needed to be kept in the designated areas and he would have to wait until later to finish his snack. Not half an hour later, while new guy was watching some training videos, a longtime employee came to my office upset that half of her lunch was missing. As she described the items, I asked asked her if she had a red such-and-such such lunch bag. She said, yep, that was hers. I immediately knew what had happened, pulled new guy into my office and explained he must have the same lunch bag as his coworker, and it was her lunch he'd been eating. New guy replied that he did, in fact, not mix up her lunch bag with his own, as he didn't even bring his own. Yep. He stole someone else's food and ate it right in front of me on his first day. Needless to say, he was terminated for theft after less than two hours on the job. Story 19. I was the registrar in a college, and I needed another assistant registrar. One of the women who has graduated with a master's in business from our college applied. Before I interviewed her, I asked all of her professors what they thought, and they all thought she would be great. So, I hire her. And day one, I know it's not gonna work. She didn't know how to file anything. She couldn't tell a last name from a first name. She asked what the typewriter was. I asked her to print out some envelopes, and she didn't even know how to open Word. I went to the dean of the college, and he agreed we would let her go the next day. Story 20. I've had a few on first day or before end of week. Mostly for misrepresenting themselves just to get hired. Hired them specifically for overnights. Job posting said overnights. Official job offer said overnights. Schedule given to her was for overnight shifts. She didn't show up for her first night shift. Arrived in the morning and said, she can only work days, and I had to let her because she was already hired or something. Hired someone else because they said in the interview they will work evenings and weekends. Works two days and says she can only work nine to five Monday through Thursday, so she can spend weekends at her cabin. Another applied for a job where the description said you need to be able to lift up to 60 pounds unloading trucks. And on the first day, he says he can't do any heavy lifting because he hurt his back at his last job. And last one. Was so excited to join the company that he broke into a locked up display with company swag and stole a bunch of it to wear. This was probably two weeks into his three weeks training. Story 21. Not a record breaker and I actually didn't get to fire them, but I was working for a nonprofit, running a small regional office. From time to time, we would have special fundraising drives to raise money for specific local programs. I would hire temp workers to call a cherry picked list of supporters who were involved with the nonprofit. So, not cold calls, but not the most pleasant job. Because we were a nonprofit and wanted to share the love, so to speak, we hired our temp workers from another nonprofit who took in homeless people, gave them some training, and helped them get work experience. Win win for both of us, right? Our fundraising calls get done, and they get recent work experience. I had two women start at 8 a.m., went through a brief training session with them, and started them working the phones. I hung around for a while to be sure they weren't having any troubles. Then I left for my morning appointments. I didn't spend much time in the office. I came back around 11 a.m. to check on them. The office was locked up and no one was there. I discovered the two women had taken all of the minor electronics, think radio DVD player, and helped themselves to my stash of change for the vending machines. Altogether, they couldn't have gotten more than 10 or $20 at a pawn shop for what they took, which is what they would have earned with an hour's work. I called the other nonprofit and told them what happened. That nonprofit kicked them out. Those two women were homeless again. One of the stupidest things I've ever seen someone do. Story 22. I work in the theater industry and I have produced slash directed quite a few actors whom I fired after a few days but my quickest fire was actually a technician. Let's call him Noah. Noah was 19 years old, and had been brought in because his father was a friend of the director or something, and I immediately realized something was off about him. Firstly, he was easily 6'4", but probably only like 150 pounds. Additionally, he was constantly asking the other staff members how to accomplish basic tasks, showing he knew nothing about tech. After lunch, I came in to find him attempting to sand a chunk of welding steel on the shop belt sander. For those who don't know, a belt sander is meant to grind down wood. Steel is famously harder than wood, and he was clearly ignoring sparks flying from every opening in the machine. I later learned that he decided he wanted to make a sword. I have 10 rules posted in my shop. Don't work in the shop without a buddy. If you break a power tool, you pay for it. As I shut off the power and explained to Noah that this would be coming out of his paycheck, he screamed, threw his sharpened pole of steel at me, and ran out, violating my unwritten 11th rule, don't try to murder people. 
Luckily, I was unharmed, and he was fired after seven hours of work. The director tried to chew me out, so I said I would hire him back if I could throw the metal he sharpened at the director, which the producers found funny enough to back me up. Story 23. I ran an editorial website, and was looking for opportunities to share our content in the comment section of other websites, so I would search words in some of our articles to find similar content. I quickly found three instances in which entire paragraphs on our website had been copied by other websites. Enraged, I dug further, and finally realized we were doing the copying, and it all traced to one writer. I scheduled a meeting with her in the morning to talk through these few, uh, slip-ups. At midnight, I woke with a start and investigated everything she had written for us, and realized she had done this with all 14 articles she had written. The purpose of the morning meeting quickly changed. She got away with it for a long time, huh, OP? I'm surprised that didn't get caught sooner, but it's good that it did. Stealing content and then getting paid for it as if you had written it is, uh, wrong. Wrong and gross. Gross and bad. I think calling her a writer uh, as well is a little uh, generous. Story 24. Managed an adult store for a few years. During the interview, the soon-to-be new hire wore normal, decent-looking jeans and a button-up shirt. Seemed like a good candidate, so he was hired. New hire showed up for work the first day in a formal suit with tails and a top hat. Told him uh, he didn't need to do that, as the dress code is casual. Next day, he showed up in a legit head-to-toe ninja costume. I thought it was hilarious, because apparently he felt a full-on ninja costume was more casual than his tails and top hat. Sadly, the owner came by to meet the new hire and was not nearly as amused as I was about it, and he was fired on the spot. I always wonder if it would have helped having a ninja running the register to deter people from doing drugs in the jack shacks our store had. I like to think so. Story 25. During the third year of my apprenticeship, we got a new colleague for the banquet department of the hotel. I had the job to show him what he would need to do during the day. Since he had experience in the field and during the next day he only had to take care of 30 guests during three breaks, we decided to let him do it alone. I told him he should make the setup for the other rooms when he's done taking care of the guests. When I came to work the next day, he did nothing else than taking care of the guests for nine frickin' hours. All in all, that's maybe a half hour of work, maybe three quarters of an hour if you're slow. I rarely lose my patience, but when my colleague leaves me like seven hours of work just because he's lazy, I tend to be upset. He just told me that to do the setup is not part of his work. After he repeated that in front of the manager and in front of the director, even after they showed him it was literally written in his contract, he got fired. The worst thing was that he was the husband of our office lady. He not only flushed his own reputation down the drain for the biggest hotel chain in Germany, he also ruined his wife's quite a bit. A day later, my manager told me that they also found out he lied in his CV after they fired him. Edit. I almost forgot the dude that lasted a full four hours. This was in a company that produced food. The shifts started at five o'clock which for most meant to get up around 3.30 because the company was located on the outskirts of the city. The company was very generous with breaks, and you never worked longer than two hours until you had a break. They even paid you half an hour more than you actually worked every day. They were also really relaxed with new hires because you needed a bit of time to get used to getting up so early. So we meet him at like 4.50 at the lockers and say hello. Me and my colleagues go down to the production halls and make a little small talk with the boss and start working. The only one who doesn't show up is the new guy. After like half an hour, a guy from the production team comes up to us. Says that there's... Somebody from your team, we had different uniforms, sleeping in the locker room. So we wake him up and start to show him really simple tasks. And he's not even able to do this stuff on pallets, that's elementary school math. During the first break, I have coffee and a cigarette with a coworker. Take a guess who doesn't show up after break and is again sleeping in the locker room. Yep, new guy. My boss was an old guy that worked there for over 20 years and was one of the nicest bosses I've ever had. Even for him, it was a bit much that somebody falls asleep two times during work and he made it very clear this shall not happen again. Ten minutes later, the new guy crashes a forklift truck and he wasn't even supposed to be driving it into a container full of fish. He not only destroyed the fork, but also spilled 3,000-ish euros of fish and brine all over the place. After that, he got screamed at by three different head of departments and fired. I have never again seen somebody that got screamed at there or screwed up so bad. They were all, including the department heads and the big boss, so nice and soft people. I never thought something like that could happen there. I don't know how I could forget that dude. He was really the employee of the month. OP, how can you say employee of the month? He didn't even last a day. I feel like at some point you just gotta take the L. You're like, you know what? I'm not cut out for this. I'm gonna go home. My bad, guys. My bad. Instead, you fall asleep at work twice, get told don't do it again, and instead of going to sleep, you crash a forklift. Nice. Incredible, incredible work, sir. Anyway, that's all the stories we have for today. There were some, uh, pretty 
interesting workers in this thread. I think that the fastest one here is 30 minutes. I'm looking through it now, and I think that's the fastest one I see, which is impressive, to be honest. Getting fired in half an hour on your first day. You kind of have to try to do that, to be honest. Well, maybe not. I feel like if I wanted to, I could get fired pretty easily. There's a lot of things you can do. Anyway, <laughs> that aside, for now, I hope you have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, also, thanks for watching, I forgot to say that.